So in today's video, we're gonna go through the Trinoff. Now what I've got is I've got a couple of microphones set up here, and what I'm gonna try and do is record the speakers coming back. And with the Trinoff, what I wanna do is I wanna just kind of show you exactly what the Trinoff does in the sense of when it's turned on and when it's turned off, how much difference it makes. And you'll be able to hear because the way I've set the microphones up is, is to be able to capture and simulate the listening position. So in theory, what should happen is when we have the Trinov on, it should sound great through, through the speakers coming to the microphone. Um, when I turn it off, you should hear the room uncorrect and the speakers not be correct for the room. Um, so that's basically what the Trinov does. But what I'm going to do is when I turn it on and off, you should be able to accurately hear exactly what the Trinov is doing and how it's correcting the room. And what I can do is I can change certain parameters on the Trinov software and turn off certain elements of the of it so that what you can hear is you can hear the phase alignment turn off you can hear the um the eq that's applied to the speakers turn off and i can switch those on and off and hopefully i'm hoping and you'll have to let me know in the comments whether this actually works and if you get that sense of what the Trinov is doing. But hopefully what's going to happen is you'll be able to hear at home or listening to this video, you'll be able to hear the difference of what's actually coming out of the speakers to what I'm simulating is my ears. So as you can see from this front panel here, we have a preset section. And what we can do is switch between various different presets. Now the presets, what they are, are different um, positions of the microphone to capture the room. So no matter where you're standing in the room, whether you're sitting or whether you're standing, you always are in the sweet spot. So you can just switch between which version of the preset you want to be listening to and it will correct for your position in the room. So we have set up a Dolby Atmos standing position, a Dolby Atmos sitting position. So that's basically when the, the when the console is up in the position of up because obviously when we have our console down and when we have it up it changes the way that the room sounds. So it's very very particular in the way that you want to correct for a room is is bang on correct for for what in the room so if the console's down but I'm in the standing position it will sound different to if the console's up and I'm in the standing position so we have the standing position and the sitting position obviously what happens there is you're capturing the room when you're standing and then so your microphone's up here capturing the room in this position because that's obviously where your ears are then when you're sitting the microphone's all the way down here so you're down at your ear level down here so it's two different capture points for the room so we have standing and sitting positions on each of our um, kind of room uh, captures. So we have also stereo. Now the stereo version is just our left and right speaker with bass management on our subs. Uh, we then have the binaural standing and the binaural sitting. Now those two are basically still stereo, but it's the binaural render coming back hitting the Trinov, correcting for the room. So what we're then listening to is a correct binaural stereo image. So there we have our presets. Now what it's actually doing, what I can do is I will show you uh, on here, if we go to the optimizer graphics, this is the room capture for the left and right speaker. Now what you can see is because the room's so uh, kind of good in sense of um, left and right, it's it's got a very symmetrical room. What you see there is two lines of the room capture. Now you've got the left, and then if we hit right, now you see in red, the right. Now, what you want is it to look like this at the bottom. So that's what the Trinov has done. What the Trinov has done there is it has corrected the room so that we have this, this lovely straight frequency range. So next, if we go to the optimizer settings, we can then show you, this is the optimization on, then you have the acoustic correction, which you can just switch on and off if you wanted. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to show you that through the microphone. I'm going to switch these settings off and you'll, you'll hopefully notice the difference made 
when jumping, when turning basically certain uh, features of the Trinov off. You've got their level alignment, which basically is your volume of all your speakers being aligned so that they all play at the right volume. And then you've got the delay alignment, which is your, um, your basically how quick the speaker, the audio reaches your ear from each speaker. It's lining all of those so you don't get any phase. So the optimization is currently on. What we will do now is play back the audio and capture it with these uh, microphones. Now, what in theory should happen is you will be able to hear me turn the Trinov on and turn the Trinov off. When I turn it on and off, you'll hear the change in the room and you'll hear it uncorrect and then be correct. So now what you've got to imagine is imagine if you didn't have a Trinov. So the uncorrect version, imagine how you would EQ this this track differently if the Trinov was off. And you'll notice how you'll, you'll EQ it with the, the false perception that the song is brighter when it isn't. So let's press play and um, I'm going to play back the binaural standing position because that's where we are and I want to just capture the left and right speaker. So there you can hear the difference of the Trinov on and the Trinov off. Now that's that's just in binaural, that's not in Dolby Atmos. So when it comes to Dolby Atmos, we're talking multiple speakers, 15 in total in this room, in comparison to what we were just listening to there, which was stereo. So now what I'll do is I'll play the exact same audio, but what I'll do this time is I'll go into the optimizer settings and I'll turn off certain parameters so it's not global it's not everything first of all what we're going to turn off is the acoustic correction so we'll turn that on and off So what the acoustic correction is doing there is it's turning off the EQ settings. So it's acoustically correcting the speakers and applying that EQ correction. So when we're, what we're doing there is we're turning that on and off. And that's why you can hear that difference in sound. Now next we're going to go to level alignment. Now what I'm going to do is first of all switched to Dolby Atmos standard. Now the reason I'm going to switch to Dolby Atmos is because that way we are capturing all 15 speakers all the way around us. Um, so what that will do is that will actually give us more level alignment because it's not just where what we were listening to before was the two speakers left and right. Um, now, when it comes to level alignment, it's just level aligning those two speakers. Whereas the level alignment for the Dolby Atmos is leveling everything all the way around the room and on the ceiling. So it's a lot more apparent. Now you will notice there that when switching the level alignment on and off, you'll notice that there's a big, big difference in the low end. Like the low end is so much louder. Uh, and that's mainly because the subs 
uh, uh, I'd not level align. They're not aligned to, to the correct volume. Um, so basically the subs, I think, probably got around plus six dB there. Um, and there's obviously two of those. So it's making quite a bit of difference. And one thing you may not get in the, um, in the, cause it's obviously recorded off a microphone. One thing you will not get is that these back speakers and the ceiling speakers, uh, all sound a lot lot quieter than they should sound there's basically when it's switched on and off the back of the room goes right down and that's mainly because the front speakers are bridged uh, whereas the back speakers aren't and the front speakers um, are, are 140s CI series 140s whereas the back speakers are 65s and on the ceiling are CI 30s so they all have a different kind of volume output which is what the Trinov is correcting for so next, what we'll do is we'll do the delay alignment. Now, what the delay alignment is, I'll keep it into in the Dolby Atmos uh, standing preset. And delay alignment is basically the, the time it takes for the speaker, the audio to come from the speaker to your ears. Um, every speaker in this room is slightly different. Um, no matter how well you build a room, it's you're always going to have slightly different um, from the point of the speaker to your ears. So what the Trinov is doing here is the delay alignment is making sure that every speaker in this room hits this source at exactly the right time. So next, what I want to show you is the difference in sound when we switch from a standing position to a sitting position. Now, the difference here is that when we captured this room, we've put the mic at a standing position, which is in ear line. And then when we've done the sitting position, we've sat down in the chair and measured it from ear line down here in the sitting position. So what will happen then is the room takes into account of the actual sweet spot changing from there to there. So if in theory, if I leave the microphones up here, you will hear a difference um, of the room uncorrecting itself for this position down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it in the standing position, I'm gonna play the audio, and then I'm gonna capture it up here. And you'll hear that in the standing position, it sounds correct. Then what I'll do is I'll switch it to the sitting position and you'll hear that it doesn't sound correct. Then what I'll do is I'll drop the microphones down to the sweet spot of the state of the sitting position and move the desk down. And then what you'll hear then is that the the sweet spot because the microphones are now in the sweet spot, it will change back to a correct listening position. So this is just going to demonstrate exactly how important it is. Um, of you moving around the room and how important it is to have these different presets. For, um, so if you were standing back further back from the uh, from from where the, the mic was captured and the sweet spot is, the room's gonna change slightly. So you always wanna work in the preset that is set for exactly where you're standing. So what I'll do is we'll start by playing the sound as it is in the standing position, then we'll switch um, to the sitting position, but leave everything set up for the standing position. Then I'll change the setup for the sitting position and the room should then become accurate. Let's see if this works.
Now I hope that came across uh, as how I can hear it. I know when I switch between the sitting and standing positions, if I literally duck down from the standing position, I then go into the sweet spot. And I can make, I can really tell that the sound isn't correct depending on where I'm standing. So I know that that's how important it is to have these sitting and standing positions. Most people, they will just be sitting mixing. I like to stand up and mix because I've got this adjustable desk and console. I like to stand up, mix my music and then when I'm mastering, for instance, I like to sit down. So I like to have those that 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 ability to to switch between the two. So there we have the Trinov in action. Now the Trinov, for me personally, it is an essential tool. If you turn the Trinov off, your room falls apart. And the problem you've got with a lot of people, and and I, I know this because I go into lots of these studios, and I know I know what a room sounds like without a Trinov. Um, I go into other studios, for instance, and you can't trust what you're hearing. And that's the problem, is if you don't have a Trinov, you can't physically trust what you're hearing is correct. Now, I know if I turn that Trinov off and work in this room, now bearing in mind, this room is a beautiful room. It's perfection. The, the Trinov makes it 100% per perfect. So, I know if I turn that Trinov off, the room becomes brighter, um, the bass becomes louder, the, the, basically the, the mids dip a little bit. And, and that's just um, due to how the speakers sound, um, especially in Atmos with 15 speakers. The, the problem you've got then is when I've got the Trinov off, I'm making EQ adjustments that aren't correct because what I'm hearing isn't true to what's actually being played. Um, now, with the Trinov active, I know that everything I'm doing is bang on correct. And the difference is that when I send a mix back to a client, it's perfect. It's, it's in the sense of that the actual translation from this room translates perfectly to their room. Because if you're working with perfect audio and what you're hearing is perfect, it's very easy to translate that into another room. Whereas if, for instance, I was mixing in here and I've got my songs way, my speakers, for instance, are way too bright and there's too much bass because the Trinov's off, then what I'm doing is I'm I'm undercompensating for the bass, so I'm I'm not adding enough bass in. I because it's too bright in the room, I'm then EQing out the brightness, taking off some of that brightness. So I'm then having a dull mix. And the mids are kind of it's it's very much like that, where you've got your lows are cut off and your highs are cut off. And that's a problem because that doesn't then translate well into someone else's room. And this is why we get such good mixes, uh, because what we can do in here, we know it's 100% correct. So that when the client plays it back, they go, wow, it sounds perfect. It sounds lovely. You know, there's always revisions that need to be made because it's that's more of a balancing issue with with what the client wants and what what we want. Um, and it's it's getting that right. But ultimately, when when we perform a mix, because we are hearing perfect audio, it makes such a big difference to what the client hears and the results that the client gets. And, you know, the Trinov uh, 16 channel Dolby Atmos version is around 10,000 to 12,000 pound around that mark. Uh, but I, I say this all the time is how much um, it doesn't matter how much it costs because you cannot put a price on how good the audio sounds. You cannot put a price on accurate listening position. You cannot put a price on these sorts of things because they they are priceless. Having the perfect room and the perfect listening position is priceless because no matter how good another engineer is, if they are not in a perfect room, they do not get a perfect sound. 